I've now finished installing the alternator and rectifier and it's charging the battery. It's supposed to generate 20 amps, but only at 6,000 RPM and above. I don't like revving the engine high and loaded because of the vibration. So I'll wait to the next hover test to check this. Something I want to change is the proximity of the control mechanism to the ground. A few of you have suggested this and it's a sensible move. It should be fairly straightforward, but I want to make sure I don't alter the handling. If I shorten the front end, I need to know how much to shorten the back end. They won't be the same of course. To make sure I get this right, I have made a quick model. I've got it set up at the moment with the current ratio and marked the lines of travel on both levers. If I move the connecting bar upwards by 45mm on both sides, the ratio has now changed. If I move the connecting bar up using the same ratio to the pivots on both sides, then the overall ratio remains the same. Perhaps obvious, but I like to check I've got things right before cutting material. I can now modify the levers. The digital readout on the mill has a radius function which I quite like. Individual plunges in the z-axis at 1mm intervals, but it does a nice enough job. I've also remade the steering stick from welded aluminium, but now I've made it, it's worrying me. I'm going to check the strength of the welds because if it breaks, it's serious. <coughs> well, that was a big wake up call. The tube I bought a while ago and I can't remember the grade. Seems it's a grade that doesn't like being welded, or at least not with the type filler rod I used. I think it was a bad idea anyway to trust an aluminium welded part in such a critical area. I'm going back to welded steel, but a thinner gauge as... I tried welding this material again, this time with 4043 rod as opposed to 4047. The difference is massive, and what I would have expected first time around. I think this shows the danger in doing this sort of thing, and how easily you can be caught out. I decided to test this part because I was worried about it. There are other parts that also worry me and testing them to destruction would be a good move. There is a small issue I need to sort with the exhaust flex joints. The steel springs have elongated the mounting holes and the springs have lost tension. It looks to me that the aluminium faces have been subjected to hammering. This could be why the exhaust cracks at the nearest bend and not anywhere else. It's quite a simple fix. I've made these small steel ringlets and pinned them in place. The next problem I found was play in the cyclic stick again. Keeping play to a minimum while keeping friction to a minimum within this mechanism is challenging. It really doesn't take much movement in a joint to cause a large movement on the cyclic stick. I've replaced this plastic insert for a steel insert and made it as accurately as I could. There is still some very small play, but it's as good as I'm going to get it, I feel. It has been suggested that I go to an overhead stick like the Benson B9 and early gyrocopters. This would certainly make life easy, but it's just not what I want. All the controls are backwards compared to the conventional setup. These unboltable wheel handling brackets I just left on during the hover testing, but I'm just wondering what they weigh. Well, at nearly 1.4 kilograms, I shall be removing them next time. The machine is nearly ready for more testing and the weather is getting better as we head into summer again. As I wander around the field and imagine myself flying, I look at it from a point of nostalgia. I grew up here and was driving around the field at the tender age of three. I then deviated to motorbikes for a while. Back then, helmets and appropriate footwear weren't considered mandatory. As a teenager, I built a few things, but there wasn't anybody in the family available at the time to teach me, and so I just did whatever I could. Most of what I learned at the time was from a friend of the same age who had much more knowledge than I did. We built go-karts together, and the engine you see here, I bought with my saved pocket money. I collected it with this bicycle trailer I made as a school project. 
My friend and I used to race around this field with our homemade go-karts. We both got engineering apprenticeships off the back of our home exploits and we both knew what we could then build with our newfound knowledge. Then the go-karts got bigger and I also developed an interest in radio controlled planes and helicopters, which of course the field was a great space to learn a new skill. So after 35 years or so of having fun in this field, here I am again with the most ambitious project yet. I do wonder what certain members of the family would think if they were still around. I also wonder what people do in cities with such limited space to experiment. If I grew up in such a place, would I still have built a homemade helicopter? Or would my interests have been very different? Nobody knows, I guess, but it's an interesting thought. Okay, name time. I had quite a lot of name suggestions and it was real fun to read them all, so thanks. I've made a decision and I'll tell you that in a second, but here are some of the ones I found amusing. Okay, first up we have Dixie Blender. Okay, next one. Dixie Death Trap. It's got a ring to it, I'll give you that. Dixie Chopper. Bit like Dixie Chicks, but could have been taken along the same lines as the Blender. I don't think it was meant like that though. Dixie Normous. Now, I didn't get this one to start with. I was thinking, Normous? What kind of name is Normous? And I thought, oh, you got to put it together. Yeah, I'm not going to choose that one, despite how accurate it might actually be. My personal favourite, after mentioning Boaty McBoatface in my last video, Dixie Mc dick face that one still cracks me up i tell you well done here we go then the name i have chosen is dixie pixie as suggested by two people from the last video now after doing some research it seems there is a fiercely debated argument to whether pixies should have wings but what i think is important to remember is that pixies aren't real, just like unicorns, the Easter Bunny, and of course, the moon landing. I have left spacing on the tail fins for an important safety feature, just to let other pilots know that they had better watch out because I'm a newbie. One final thought, do you think if the tail fins were angled like this, would it give some automatic yaw stability, like heading hold on a radio controlled model? Thoughts are always welcome. Thank you.